and welcome. We're just getting live on Instagram and Facebook. Lovely to have you here. Um, we are doing a Pilates Facebook Live um, video today. We're going to be doing a workout, a Pilates workout. We're just making sure that we get everybody included. So I'm just going to get this loaded up here. Here we go. So how are you all today? Are you all okay? Um, we're going to be doing um, a focus today on balance and resistance. So our studio theme running runs in a 12 week um, cycle. Uh, this week is our balance and resistance week. And I know balance and coordination is one of the, the toughest things um, in Pilates. And I know that for a lot of people, the balance is a real challenge. I know it certainly has um, a bit of a Marmite week for people. Um, we're going to do a bit of release work to help us improve our uh, connection and our activation through the whole line of our body. We're also going to do um, a couple of stretches and some core activation and then we do some standing work. Um, so I'm just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to get logged on. So um, if you haven't done a live workout with us before, um, all you need is a bit of space. You don't have to have any fancy equipment there and you can just do this in clothes that feel comfortable for you. Now as you see behind me, I have got my mat space out. I've got a spiky ball and I've also got a block. So if you don't have any of this equipment, don't worry, you can do it without. But if you do have a massage ball or a spiky ball, go get that now. And if you have um, a block as well, please grab that as well. So I'm just gonna say hello to a few people. Hey Laura, hey Dilly, hey Fiona, nice to see you all. Thank you for coming on. Sorry to turn to see your names. Um, okay, so if you don't have a block and I've just got couple of inch thick block here and I'm going to use this to do some of my standing um, exercises later. So if you don't have one of these at home, um, just a nice thick textbook, um, anything that you feel happy um, to stand on nice and supportive. Okay, let's get started by doing some release work. Now I'm actually going to take my socks off today because one of the things that really helps us with our balance is the feedback from our feet. And if we have shoes on, which sometimes we need to if we've got some injuries or some sensitivities around our feet, we might like to keep our shoes on. But if you can train without shoes and socks on, especially when we come onto a nice firm floor, we have lots of feedback and information into the body. So I've got my spiky ball, and I'm going to start with a release through my feet. So I'm going to place the ball underneath um, my big toe, and I'm just going to gently press down, and then I'm going to slowly roll my foot forwards through, and then release. So I'm just massaging out the centre of the foot. So if you're just joining us now, don't worry, you have missed too much. We've just been getting some equipment set up. You just need a spiky ball and a tennis ball. We're just massaging and opening up the centre of the foot. Now the reason I'm doing this, not only is it going to help release my feet because I may be a bit tight from being in trainers, but it's also going to stimulate all of the control centres within my body. So it's stimulating my body's awareness and control. So I'm going to place my foot right into the middle of the ball here now. And I'm going to have an over centre arch. I'm keeping a gentle pressure there. I'm going to lower and lift my toes. And just about see that on the camera. So I'm giving those toes a little lift and lower, lift and lower. You can imagine all the connective tissue that sits on the sole of the foot. And I'm lifting and lowering that foot under what we call threading. So I'm opening up that tissue. Okay, let's do two more there. And I'm going to put my heel onto the floor. I'm going to step my other leg forwards. Now the, the spiky ball I've got today is quite soft. So I've got lots of capacity to stretch through. So I'm keeping my heel down and keeping my pelvis tucked under gently. And I'm stretching down through the back heel. Now it doesn't look like a normal deep car stretch, and that's because I've got my toes up, so the ankles are a deeper stretch already. Okay, after my next out breath, my next breath cycle, I'm going to soften both of my knees so I come, if you can see that on my knee, I'm coming more into a flex knee, coming knee towards my toes. And I'm working to stretch down here in the lower part of my calf. That's my stability and posture muscle of my calf. So hopefully it's going to make me better at standing and get more out of my exercises. Okay, let's release off there. Let's move into the other side. So taking your ball over to the second side, let's roll through. So we're opening up that foot, creating lots of space, sending lots of information to the brain and helping our body to become more connected and use our feet. They are our foundation for movement. Quite often we get asked how to improve balance and it's kind of a bit chicken and egg. If you don't do any balance training, if you don't do any stability training, you're not going to get stronger. So you've got to kind of do it to get stronger. But it's really important that you keep that well controlled because if you're wobbling loads and really adapting your movement, what you're going to be 
firing off is your global or your big muscle, your bracing muscle, so you'll just fix and hold on rather than actually being able to get a lovely alignment and connection and be controlling that movement. Okay, let's hold the ball in the centre of the foot there now. We're going to lift and lower those toes. Now, if you don't have a ball at home, you can do this um, gently rolling on top of a foam roller. Um, or you could even use things like cans of coke, especially if you have got some sensitivity in your feet. Pop them in the fridge, make them nice and cool, and you can roll them gently forwards and backwards. If not, you can just place your foot over a roll towel and lift and lower those toes. Okay, let's pop the heel onto the floor. I'm going to step my foot forward. And if you can see that, so my right toes now, you can see, are lifted onto the ball. My heel is down onto the floor. And I'm just trying to keep those connections. So I'm not dropping forwards into my spine and keeping that connection and pressing down into my heel. Okay, one more breath cycle here. We're holding for about 20 to 30 seconds, allowing time for that stretch to happen. Okay, when you're ready, let's bend those knees now. So I'm bringing my knee down. So rather than keeping a straight leg, bend the knee, bring it forwards over here. Don't worry about what your left leg is doing, I'm just moving mine out the way so you can see. So I get a deeper lower calf stretch. And you might find that one side is significantly tighter and more restricted than the other. Okay, one more breath cycle here, and then we're going to release off. Fantastic. Okay, let's pop the ball aside for a moment. We're going to do um, a couple of stretches now down onto the mat, and we're also going to do some activation exercises for our core. What I want you to think about, if you've never done Pilates before, and you don't normally come to our studio, so a few things I want you to think about. One is trying to keep a long spine, and by that we mean not arching the back, not slumping into the shoulders, or fixing out through the chest. So when you're laid onto the mat, imagine a nice smooth curve here at your lower back, like you're trapping a small bubble between your back and, and the mat. And nice and long through the neck. Often when we lay down, we end up letting our chin point up towards the sky, and that scrunches the spine and changes the tension down the back. So we're just going to keep that lovely, long, soft curve through the spine, and we're going to think about activating for our core. So your core is your pelvic floor and your deep tummy muscles, and I'll teach you how to do that as we go. So when you're ready, let's come and have a lie down onto the mat, so you can pop your ball and your block out the way. I'm going to come and lay down here onto my back, onto my shoulder, and roll it over. If you need to, place a head cushion in between uh, the mat and the back of your head. So let's roll forwards and backwards with our pelvis, settling our hips so we're down into the mat on the left and the right side, we're not arching or slumping up one side. My knees should be tram tracks pointing up towards the sky, and my arms are relaxed on my side. So, look for that lovely soft curve in your lower back, look for that lovely length through the back of the neck. As you breathe out now, I want you to engage through pelvic floor and core, so imagine you're lifting up through that groin, gently connecting in towards the inside of your tummy to your belly button. Exhale, let's float that knee up into tabletop, so we're going to make a little shelf with our shin. Hold it there for a breath in, and then place it back down. Let's switch to the other side. Lift it up, hold it there, breath in and then breath out back down. So we're taking it nice and steady to start with. These are our activation exercises. We don't need to go in all guns blazing, we're just starting to talk to the body. And I want you just to become aware, whether or not your pelvis is staying nice and still. Do you kind of roll off one side or the other as you lift up those legs? If this feels okay for you, and that you're happy to come into double legs, we're going to float the second leg off, so we're going to engage a little bit more, so we've imprinted and engaged with the abdominals, float that upper leg up, so I've got a double shelf now. So from here, let's lift the arms. I'm going to turn the palms up and I'm going to pat my hands up towards the sky. So I'm engaging through my pelvic floor. I'm doing five pats with my arms for a breath in and five pats with my arms for a breath out. I'm trying to keep my shoulder blades open and relaxed down onto the mat. I'm not punching here, lifting through those collarbones. Okay, so keep going there, counting all the way through for a breath of five and out for a breath of five. So five pats, two, three, four, five. And now, two, three, four, five. Let's do one more round of that. And Okay, engaging, lengthening through those arms. Let's release one leg. Keep that connection there as we release the second leg. Allow those knees now to roll to the left and the right. So that was a hundreds exercise. Fantastic for stabilizing and activating through the core. We're going to do that one more time. If you were doing it in a single leg position, or if you found it was too much with both legs up, I want you just to lift one leg up and do exactly that same exercise again. So when you're ready, let's float one leg up, engage your core, up we come, arms come through. This time I'm going to take smooth circles, so little circles round. I like the palms facing up because I find it helps me to 
stop bunching and connecting and shortening in my chest. So I open my arms, round little circles, keeping my shelf for my shins. Imagine my coffee or my, my lunch, which is coming, has balanced on that. I certainly don't want to spill that. Okay, a little five circles for that in breath, five circles for out breath. Now just cast your attention back to your lower back. Have you got that lovely soft curve there? Have you slumped down into the mat? Have you arched away? If you have, just try and connect a little bit more down ribs and pelvis, making sure we've got that alignment there. This is just our, our foundation. We're really setting our body up to get the very most out of our exercise. Okay, three, two, one. Relax those arms back down, supporting with the core. Let's release one leg. Second leg, and again, I'm rolling those knees gently side to side for our hip twist level two. Or we can go nice and long, pencil stretch to open up through the body, which I feel better for you. Okay, before we go any further, we're going to do a few little stretches. So before we do our stretches, let's just grab our spiky ball and do a bit of release around the hips. So I want you to take that ball, place it underneath your left bottom cheek, have a little glide to the left and the right, and see if you can get a bit of a massaging effect into the hip. Now you might like to go nice and slowly sweeping through the hip, you might have to push and lift up a little bit and just do a gentle light glide through. See how your, your muscles are feeling? If you're looking for those areas that feel tender or tight, obviously we're not going to massage our coccyx and we're not going to massage our, um, our tailbone or our hip bone here, so we're going to stay in that fleshy area there. Okay, keep that pressure there. I found an area that feels a little bit tight in my hip there. I'm going to slide my leg down the mat and back up the mat. So I'm just gently pushing through my right foot and my right bottom cheek is hovering just off the floor a centimetre or two so I can keep my pelvis really well supported. I'm going to do two more slides there. And now lifting my hips up, I'm going to move the ball here to this outer edge of my hip. So I'm right out of the corner. So if you feel the rim of your pelvis, those pointy bones here at the front, if you track your fingers round, if you can see on the camera, my hands are sitting on the rim of my pelvis and the ball is just sitting an inch or two below, if you can see that poking out there. So I'm in these fleshy corners at the back of the pelvis. Let's roll the hips left and right now. And just adjust it, if it feels like it's not quite into that area, or you think, oh, actually it's a bit tighter up or down, just leave it. As long as you're not massaging the joints or the, the bones, you are absolutely fine to be quite organic with this and go into those areas that feel restricted for you. Okay, now I can feel just a little bit more tightness in the back of the hip there now. I'm going to roll the knee in and out now. So I'm into the back of the hip here, sort of high up towards the top of the pelvis. I'm into those muscles that tend to support the alignment of the pelvis when we're standing. So I'm getting them ready and prepared for our workout. The last little roll of that knee there. And let's lift the hip up. Hold it on to your ball for a second. If it's okay for your knee and hip joint, you're going to take your left foot over your right knee, so we've just massaged that left side, and you're going to press that knee away. If you find you don't get a stretch in this hip, you might like to hug these knees in. And this is our core stretch. I'm pushing my tailbone down onto the floor as I gently draw my knees in. You can even use this left elbow here, pushing down into that knee. I'm not forcing that, I'm not kind of losing my spine position. If this doesn't work for your joints, just avoid this one. Okay, three, two, one. Next, exhale, support the core, release the leg. And let's take the ball underneath the right hip and massaging through the right bottom cheek. So, you stay as you are. I'm going to roll around to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. So, I've got ball right underneath my bottom cheek here, gliding left and right, taking any tension out. And this is a surefire way when we do things one side and the other. It's a great way for us to tune into how our body is feeling. So I can feel like I've got a little bit of tightness here on this right hand side. So I'm going to hold that point there now. I'm going to slide that leg in now. So by releasing, and by release what we mean is often physios, we're very guilty, aren't we, of using words that people don't really understand. We all nod as our instructor tells us these things. But release, what we're talking about is where a muscle has increased its tension, um, is holding, gripping, or shortened. What we're doing by releasing is we're massaging and encouraging the muscle to retension, i.e. go back to its optimal length. So where it's um, tight and restricted and it's gripping, the massage actually helps that muscle to release and relax and open up a little bit so we can get better alignment. Those muscles will be more efficient. Okay. 
Let's pop that foot back in, lift the hips up, move the ball to that outer edge of the hip, and we're gonna roll side to side. Now, if you normally come to the studio and you prefer a variation of this that we do in class, do go into that now. But if you've never done this before, just keep this around the rim of the pelvis here. We're not going onto the hip joint. We're not going right over onto the back of the pelvis over those joints there. We're working into those areas that feel a bit tight. Okay, find that area that feels a little bit stiff and tight, and we're going to roll that knee in and out. So my feet are supported onto the ground. My weight is slightly shifted over to the right hand side into the ball. And I roll in and out with that knee. Let's do three more. So this is a version of our hip twist, which is a stability exercise for the pelvis. But actually in this way of doing it, we're moving and re-lengthening and shortening those muscles. Last one here, and lift the hips up. Okay, right foot over left knee. Either just pressing away, or if you'd like to, hug that leg in and push with the elbow. Again, don't round and lift the bottom off. Keep the tailbone pressing down into the mat. Keep thinking about that lovely long spine position. So we're maintaining that soft curve. If you like, imagine a bubble sat underneath your back. We're not going to pop that bubble by rounding the spine. We're not going to let that bubble escape by arching the spine. Okay, last breath cycle here. When we're ready, exhaling, support the core, release, and uncross those legs. Okay, let's roll onto our shoulders and come up. So we're going to protect our back. We don't need our spike ball now, so I'm just going to pop that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to bring my block into play. These foam blocks are really, really firm and hard. So if you weren't here at the beginning and you didn't see what I was saying about this, and um, what you need to do is go and grab yourself a nice thick textbook. It needs to be big enough that you can get your whole foot onto it. You don't want a small book where your feet are going to be hanging off the edges. Um, so a block or a book or anything you've got at home that would be suitable like this. If not, you don't have to do this. You can do it without the block. I just like this because it challenges the pelvis and actually clears your foot off the floor so you get a bit more um, freedom in your movement. So we're going to go for a standing series now. So when you're ready, we're going to come up into standing. I'm going to have the block on the floor. I'm going to step my left foot onto my block. So the first thing you'll notice is your hips want to drop off. And we're going to re-stack the hips. So this is one of my classic um, standing series for balance. I love this series because it's, you don't, it doesn't take long. So I want to think nice and long all the way up through the hips, soften the knees. So as you can see in the mirror behind me, if I lock my knee back, I've got this fixed brace position. If I just soften my knee, you can just see that just soft curve release into the back of the knee, which is going to make the hip and the leg work a bit harder. I am longing through my spine. So I'm going to start by exhaling, floating my right leg off, and then pop, popping the toes back down the floor. So I'm coming up, and then tapping the toe down. I'm not releasing the hip and stepping back down and staying here. So we've got a static hold at this hip, and we're active here at these hip flexors. So where we're lifting through the front of the leg, nice and long through your spine. Exhale up, inhale down. As I do this, I'm coordinating that with my core. Breathing is always the hardest thing, and for us to coordinate with our Pilates, so don't worry if it doesn't make too much sense, just concentrate here as you lift, so on the effort here, exhale, and coordinate that with a pelvic floor squeeze and gentle core squeeze. Two more here. The last one. Okay, release that leg there. Try and stay on this leg. This is where it's going to get its endurance and its build up. We're now going to slide the leg out and in. We're just starting with these components of the movement. Now, as we get tired here, this hip will be tempted to slump down or spiral off. So I want you to stay nice and tall. Keep this right leg hinging out and in. Exhale out and in. This should look very effortless. It should feel smooth. But your hip, your supporting hip, should be working really hard. Make sure that left knee is still staying soft. Last two. Last one. This time we're going to slide the leg behind us and back. And in. So I'm just step behind and in. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going back and in. Now, if you're a beginner or you're new to Pilates, I would slide my foot along the floor. Imagine you're pulling your foot through the sand, engaging here at the hip. If you've been coming to Pilates longer, I'd keep that foot off the floor, challenging that balance a little bit more. Now, this is where we're going to be tempted to arch the back. So connect these ribs, connect through the pelvic floor, out breath. And back in, out and in. Side tapping, or slicing back. Three, 
two, one. Well done. Step off, let that hip have a rest. So hopefully after that, you should be feeling that left hip is kicking in. We're going to do, I'll turn on the diagonal too, we're going to do a combination now. So we're not leaving that left hip alone. Let's come and step back on with that left foot. From here, we're going to do some circles. So imagine you're drawing a circle on the floor. If you like to, keep your toe in contact with the floor. If you want to challenge yourself more, we can keep nice and long here. So imagine you've got helium balloon attached to the top of the head. We're staying long, exhale as we go around. You'll feel your left foot maybe altering its position, maybe wobbling a bit. Lifting through that hip, that's completely normal. Three, two, keep this pelvis forward. Last one, and release. Well done. Okay, we've got one last exercise on this side. So I'm gonna ask you to turn your toes on a little bit of an angle here. So imagine if we were ballerinas, we'd all be turned up. So we're just stepping those toes slightly turned out. Now, if this causes you any problem that you're kneeing your hips, do come back to this parallel. But if not, I'm going to turn those toes out. You should feel a little bit more connection into the outside of the hip. We're gonna work and what we call our outer range. So we're gonna strengthen that corners of the movement that you usually get the weaker. So from here, come up onto this left leg. Now you're going to feel like you might want to arch your back a little bit, so tuck that tailbone underneath. This is going to really challenge your pelvic stability, work into your glute heels. We're going to go into our plie squat. So we're going to step that foot out, plie squat, and then step it back in. Step, plie, and back in. So plie is a French word, ballet word for squat. It's a ballet version of our squat where we have this external, this turnout position at the hips. Exhale, all the way through, pulling up with that core. Now, for those of you who know me, I'm a women's health physio, and I know that for a lot of ladies, and a lot of people who struggle with core stability, so back, um, if you've got any herniation or pelvic floor dysfunction, this point here, at the bottom of your squat, is where you're most vulnerable. So we're gonna change our breathing slightly. So we're gonna squat, slow this down now. Exhale, squeeze the pelvic floor, and back in. Squat. Come back in. And we're keeping our knees pointing out. We come to the bottom here, squeeze, lift that pelvic floor, exhale as we come up. Exhale up. Okay. We're going to change this very slightly for those last few. So if you want to, stay here with this step, step. If not, we're going to reach out, land, back up, and release. Out you go, land, off you go, balance, tap in. So you're either doing step in, Nice and controlled. If you want a little bit more dynamic balance, control out, squat, pelvic floor up, and tap in. A little bit more dynamic, a little bit more challenge. The last one. Well done. Okay, let's step off, give those legs a nice little shake out. So I'm going to set my left foot behind my right foot. So that was the side that was working. Left arm goes up into the air. We're going into a mermaid side bend. So long through the fingers here, pushing down through that left leg. Squeeze gently through the glutes, support through the core. Should feel the stretch coming down the left hand side of the body. Three, two, one, and release. Doesn't take much to start getting that heart rate up, definitely. Okay, so let's switch sides now. Right foot coming on. We're gonna go back to those standing scissors. So lower back in neutral. Hands on hips, hands waxing down both sides. We're going to exhale up, inhale down. So let's recap. Knee is soft. We're long and lifted all the way through the spine. So imagine this hip has got a bubble inside it. So where the leg bone and the pelvis sit on top of each other, imagine you've got a socket full of air there. You're not going to pop that bubble. So lift and stay light all the way out of your pelvis. Exhale up, inhale down. Last one here. And let's change the side. So you can either tap that foot in and out, or if you've been coming a little bit longer, you might like to keep that foot off the floor. Okay, now remember, this side was stabilizing before, this side was working, so you might find you're a bit wobblier. It might be because this side is weaker, it might be that your muscles are starting to get fatigued. But we're still staying long for our spine. Alignment is so much more important than range and lots and lots of reps. Okay, last two. Last one, okay, this time we've got either that step back. And you can see in the mirror behind me, I'm just tapping in and out. If not, we're going to lift and tap in. Lift, so we get a little bit more work here in the glutes, but we mustn't lose our chest position. We keep that connection in here. 
I've heard too many times people say, oh, I went to Pilates, it made it worse, or you know, really aggravated my symptoms, or I don't really feel anything working. I'd put money on the fact that you probably won't get in your alignment right. And our research, our evidence shows us that if your alignment's right, you're gonna get a lot more out of your workout. Okay, last one there. Okay, let's step off, give that right hip a little bit of a breather. I'm just gonna grab my water. So, when you're ready, let's come back onto our block, stepping on with your right foot now. Left leg is gonna do the circling. So with this, try not to hula hoop with those hips. Let's keep that lower back in neutral. Keep these hips pointing straight forwards towards me. So let's do a nice circle here, scooping round. If you imagine your thigh bone coming up into the socket, so it's a ball and socket joint. So the ball that sits on top of the thigh bone, imagine it rolling round the inside of the socket. Now, only going as wide as you can keep this stable, so rather than flicking round or adjusting the back, and if you're getting any area of catch or restriction, just ease out. Let's do two more here. The last one, and step off, giving that hip a nice release. So if you want to give that leg a shake out, you might have to go straight into our mermaid stretch, but we're going to come into a little step out now. So I'm going to set my foot onto my block. You can see I'm putting, pointing my right knee off to the corner of the room, but I'm keeping my pelvis and my body facing forwards to engage that hip a little bit more. So up nice and tall. We're going to do our step out into our little plie squat. So we step out, squat, step back in. Play around with these first few, seeing how deep you're happy to go to in your squat. Do you feel here you can control your pelvic floor, or can you go much lower? What I don't want you to do is go really, really low, feel like you're going to benefit loads more, but actually miss out on the quality of the movement. So use these first set to work out that support, that coordination with the breath and with the pelvic floor. So a little reminder, when we get to the bottom of our squat, squeeze of that pelvic floor. Exhale on the other. Let's do two more. Last one. Okay, are you ready? We're going to go into this dynamic one. So this time you can stay here doing your steps, or we're going to kick out, land, and then come back in. Kick out, land, come back in. Now at any point you feel you need a little bit more support, pop your foot back down. Kick, land, come back in. If you can try and do it, completely unsupported, that's going to really challenge your core, but watch out for the shoulders coming up, for the ribs flaring, for you dropping your spine, or for you to rotate it. And your quality and control is far more important. Last one, and come back in. Well done, let's step off, take that right leg behind, right arm up and over, lengthening through your body, to get this lovely long stretch down the right hand side of the back of the body from the chest all the way down into the hip. Okay, last two breath cycles there. The last one, and release. Well done, let's pop our block out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna do one more exercise with you, just a brief little exercise. This is a great one for you to practice at home, so that when you're brushing your teeth, when you're doing the washing up. We're gonna go into a tandem stance. So I'm gonna set my right foot in front of my left foot. So it looks like I'm walking on tightrope. If you feel wobbly, you might prefer to do this on the half floor, um, or instead of having those feet right in front of each other, you might just stagger them off slightly or bring one slightly further forwards. So I'm in my tandem stance here. I'm going to make sure my hips are facing forwards. I'm bringing my hands into a prayer position. My thumbs are glued to my chest. They're not doing any of this. They're going to keep that connection here. I'm going to roll and connect my shoulder back, long through the spine. Exhale, twist, round to the right hand side, and then come back to the centre. Exhale, twist to the right hand side, and back to the centre. So this is a rotation, not a lean back. We're going to think about our tummy like a wet flannel. And as you rotate to the right hand side, exhale, imagine you're squeezing that flannel out, and then coming back to the middle. Let's do two more as we are. And then we're going to add in a different exercise to combine with this. So stay where you are, raise up onto your toes, and then come back down. So our heel raises are part of our foot series. This is fantastic balance support because we've given ourselves a very narrow base of support. Exhale up, inhale back down, 
Last two. And now I'm going to make you really dizzy. And what we're going to do is we're going to alternate. So we're going to twist, come back to the centre, raise, back down, twist, centre, and raise. Lower. Exhale as you twist. Support with that core. Let's do one more in each direction. And great. Well done. So, let's switch our feet over. Left foot in front of right. Again, do stag your feet if you need to. Let's start with our spine twist. So exhale, pelvis stays facing towards me. If you're not sure, place one hand on heart, one hand on hip. Rotate to the left. And back in. And what you should find, you can see with me, as I rotate, my hand with my chest goes this way, but this hand stays completely still because my pelvis is level. If not, preferring, if you prefer, bring your hands back to your heart. But if not, we're doing one hand on the chest, one hand on the tummy, making sure we're getting that isolation. One more spine twist. Exhale, twist. Inhale, return. Okay, let's go into our heel raises. So up onto those toes. Melt back down. I want you to avoid that kind of rock forwards and rock back. Almost imagine you're like an elevator, you're on a piston, you float up, whoops, and you swing back down. We're definitely working on our balance this week. Okay, back down. Two more. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Okay, let's combine that. We twist to the left, and then we raise up on our toes. Twist to the left. Raise onto your toes. So using that out breath to support you into the twist and up into the raise. You don't have to push really far into these movements. You may even like to just hover your heels off the floor. Let's do one more time through. Exhale, twist to the left. And then raise up onto the toes. Well done. Release from there. Okay, we're just going to finish with a calf stretch. So I'm going to send my foot behind me. Leaning forward, it's nice long spine, so I'm not kind of losing all that I've built up in that class. I'm going to keep my connection, I'm going to keep that line there, still supporting through my core. We're going to hold this here just for another two breath cycles. And then when you're ready, soften that pressure into the heel, let's switch over. Left leg goes behind now, pressing forwards into the front leg, pushing down into that heel, keep that lovely long line all the way down through the back line of the body. Two more breath cycles here. And gently releasing off. Well done. Now, if you find that any of those exercises or any of those stretches you feel like you need to repeat, feel free to go back through this. We will be loading this video up onto our page. If you want to come back and watch that later, then feel free. Now, I've just got a couple of things written here. Hello, Victoria. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you on as well. Who have we got here? Hey, Susie, how are you? Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed that exercise. It was lovely to see you the other day as well. So if you've got any questions, if you'd like to request any other workouts, feel free to comment below. Um, I'll be checking back in on Facebook in about half an hour's time at one o'clock and we're going to be doing um, live with physio. So if you've got any physio questions, any injuries you want to chat with us about, then feel free to hop on. Have a great day, enjoy your workout, and we'll see you all soon. Bye.